so check this out guys we really got to start believing what Durkee says i just got off the phone with somebody a little bit ago on off skype <clears throat> that actually verified some things you know that we always didn't know if Durkee really did it or not for instance remember when Durkee said he spent three years in prison that is actually all true he really did i talked to a guy named eddie he didn't give me his last name but he sent me some pictures and stuff of when they were in prison together in cincinnati and apparently Durkee was known on the yard for uh it's kind of crazy. I mean, I was like, "Oh my god, are you serious?" Like, like he was, he was, he was really known on the yard that he was uh, sent to. They called him, uh, you know, A one, which is crazy because I was like, "Why are they calling him A one?" And he went through this long process. He was like, <clears throat> "You have no uh, idea the size of Durkee Castle suitcase." And I was like, "Huh?" What's a suitcase? And he was like, you know, suitcase. I was like, oh my God. I was like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. He was like, dude, he was known to, you know, stash tons of stuff in his suitcase and distribute it, you know, throughout their pod and everything, you know, and he was well protected. And, you know, he was high up on the totem pole. They just called him, you know, A1. You know, he had that A1 suitcase game, you know, they'd always be like, how are we, you know, how are we going to do this? You know, we got a pound of shit, you know, coming through visitation next week. What are we going to do? It's like, dude, A1's got you. You know, all they do is like push the vending machine out a little bit and they would, you know, pass it off to Dirk and he would slide up beside the vending machine, I guess. You know, where you go down the hallway and, you know, it didn't even, dude, he didn't, this guy said he didn't even need, you know, any, any lube or anything. You know, he just went straight to it, you know, like a, a pound, what, a pound, dude? No wonder he got the nickname A1. I was like, jeez. So that was, you know, like one thing, I mean, he wasn't lying you know he he spent three years and uh along those three years you know i was like he's always talking about you know him roughing people up and you know you know him being tested you know you know did you know dirk get toh he was like no dirk you never got toh man never and i was like why and he was like because he was always protected i'm like he was like that in there not only did he, you know, have the clout because his suitcase game was, you know, tight. But he also, I was like, dang, dude. So he was actually <clears throat> throwing them things. Like, no, man, he was, he was somebody's girl. It's like, what? Like, no, dude, he was somebody's girl. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, dude, when he first got there, he was, you know, had that walk, like he was tough and everything and, you know, and. He was real quiet and, you know, he never got TOH because somebody got to him first, you know, and he became somebody's girlfriend. I'm like, oh, right. So he never got really tested. He was with some, with a tough dude or something. He's like, yeah, man, he was, you know, within, you know, two or three months of him being there, like his whole demeanor changed. You know, he was holding his, his boy's pocket. I was like, wow, you know, right behind him the whole time, you know, I guess he, his like he changed the way he wore his clothes and stuff he started wearing tight pants and you know his his man took care of him he got him some nice shoes and you know, started putting that kool-aid on him lips and stuff and i was like dang dude so he really hasn't lied about you know i mean he's probably lied about some stuff but he really did three years in prison you know and he was known throughout the prison system too for you know a one you know, darky. 
uh, his that suitcase game, I guess, was like top tier. Like, I was like, really? He's like, yeah, he's known throughout, you know, Cincinnati for just being top tier suitcase game, you know? Too bad, you know, Dirty Castle wasn't locked up here. We would still be busting pounds of stuff up in here. You know, that was that was true. You know, he didn't lie about that. He was really in prison. You know, dude told me all kinds of stuff. And then, come to find out, he, he really did play semi-professional football. But not like we thought. You know, he wasn't a quarterback. He wasn't a running back. I guess he was uh, the manager of the cheerleading squad. I guess we didn't know this about him. I mean, I guess in high school, why, why, I guess he did, he was like third, third or fourth string. Is there a fourth string? Or the third string? I don't know. He was like third string quarterback, but hit, where his heart really lied, you know, was in cheerleading. And so, like, you know, he would go through the routines and everything. He made a lot of them up. You know, he would teach them, like, how to do tumbling, you know, like in gymnastics. Like, Durkee was good at doing the splits and, you know, like, shimmy crawl dads and barrel rolls and stuff. He was just really athletic. But athletic, you know, like, cheerleading athletic. So that wasn't a lie. He did. I mean, he... He wasn't a part of the team. He was, a, uh, you know, like the cheerleader, you know, like the uh, head coach of the cheerleader. But he was, that's part of the team, though, so he didn't lie about that. I know, this is all, like, mind-blowing. Like, this whole time I thought he was lying about everything. And lo and behold, dude, he isn't. He's telling us the truth. Um. Now, I couldn't find any facts about the, the jelly roll thing that he's been talking about for three or four years about him beating Mini Thin, Jelly Roll, and Nappy Skull, Skillmore, Castle Gray Skull, whatever. I don't know what, whoever. You know, he said, you know, he really, he beat him though, you know, and then he recited, you know, those bars, blah, 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 whatever he did. So I couldn't prove that. You know, I looked into a lot of this stuff, you know, tried to contact people. You know, couldn't talk to some people. They wouldn't answer me, call back. Dead end. You know, trying to be an apprentice journalist. I'm trying to go for it. You know, everyone wants to know about the Durkinator. They want, they want to know the real stuff. So that's what we're trying to bring you, the real stuff. <sighs> Something else I found out. Um, Durky... You know, supposedly being in the, the uh, what is it? God, I can't, I always forget. The Shane Gandy show, like, uh, something. We all know Shane Gandy died. That's, you know, rest in peace, my friend. But apparently he was supposed to be on the next season of that. Come to find out, he really was going to be on the next season I can't think of what it was uh oh well doesn't matter neither here nor there but he wasn't lying about that either the only thing was is when they were sh going to be shooting the episodes um it was having conflicts with uh Durkee's schedule because another thing that we thought he was lying about but he wasn't was him being a Calvin Klein model see that's how that's a lot of the stuff I found out, you know, like he couldn't do the, you know, go film for the episodes, you know, the second season because it was interfering with his modeling. So like he was doing Calvin Klein shoot, but what he was is he was a fluffer. Um, he wasn't actually doing, you know, like not getting his picture taken, but the other models and stuff Durkee was just there to be a fluffer like to help them out to make them look better when the pictures were being shot um once again it's mind-blowing because I thought that he was lying so he not only was well, he, well you could say he was a worked with Calvin Klein because he was a fluffer of all the models and then you know he was gonna be 
in the second season and of whatever that show was. <laughs> I can't remember, but there was conflicts. He couldn't do it. So, you know, so he's basically been telling us the truth about a lot of things. Um, what are a couple other things? Um, remember like, uh, what was it a year ago, year and a half ago when he was working at, uh, he was working for this individual that Durkee was low key trying to get some evidence on him and blow the, the job wide open. Like they were really doing drugs on the job, uh, blowing money that they weren't supposed to be. And, you know, hey, Durkee had enough of it. You know, he wanted to to expose all these people because he wanted to be the stand-up citizen that he was. So you guys got I mean, if you don't know that much about Durkee, you got to be careful. He's a, He's got a short temper. Uh, he's got a really short temper. Um, but what happened was, is trying to blow all this open, um, he got the boss mad at him for something. And another guy came out and tried to uh, get Durkee to calm down. So apparently Durkee got mad. And when Durkee gets mad, we know everything blows up. Like everything goes bad. That's when you gotta watch out because Durkee's got them hands, he said, you know. He learned how to box from Floyd Mayweather. So, um, so he gets into an argument with this guy and Durkee has a ton of power or so he says. So I believe him now since he was telling the truth about everything else. He's got a ton of power. So think about it. Like he said, this guy came up and he's like, you know, hey, you don't want to mess with me. You don't know what I'm about or what I'm capable of doing. So I'm warning you now, don't just step back. You know, Durkee's telling this guy to step back. And he's like, no, I want a little bit. And so I remember he was getting a lot of flack for this because everybody was making fun of him saying, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Well, apparently, I seen the photo. Like, the guy was coming at Durkee, and Durkee, pretty much, you could tell he was at peace, you know, with himself for a second, you know. And then Durkee, like, he just is super saiyan, you know. Like, he's built like a, a stick figure, right? But he generates so much power in those brittle arms of his. And when he hit the guy... Literally, the picture, like it wasn't photoshopped or anything, but the guy was literally six feet in the air, like his back, like you could have measured it, or measuring tape, six feet in the air, and he was pert near 50 feet over, where if you get, if you were seeing my house right now, there's a gray backpack over there, he was close to that gray backpack, that's like 50 feet. But that was that was real. I seen the photo. So what I'm trying to say here is like we bust Durkee a lot, but maybe we need to chew it back, apologize, and be like, you know, man, I'm sorry. I didn't believe you, but now I do, so I apologize, Dirk. I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't believe you about a lot of things. I still don't believe you're clean. And I still don't believe you're religious. I still believe you're a woman beater. But the things that I just said, you know, I can admit when I'm wrong. Your suitcase game is A1. Your fluffing game is A1. Um, you're a great football cheerleader manager. <laughs> um, and just, we need to get you to that point to where you know, you're with God and that you're not doing drugs. But everyone, like, subscribe, you know, notifications on. And we'll just, hopefully, Durkee will just keep proving us wrong. Have a good night, guys. Scooter Bags, you're still a man, bro.